Hi, I'm Mindy Peters, the Solutions Manager at SPI, and this is the third video in a three-part series on understanding the basics of Zapier. In the first video, I walked you through exactly what Zapier is and how it works. And in the second video, I walked you through how to understand which apps you're already using work with Zapier and in what ways do they work with Zapier. You can find the links to both of those videos below. In this video, I'm going to help you understand what impacts how much Zapier costs, namely what zaps and tasks are, and how to estimate what your monthly usage is going to be. Zapier could be free, Zapier could be very expensive, so I will show you what impacts how much it costs. Let's get started looking at pricing. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, the plan levels, the cost for each plan level may have changed. However, the way that Zapier prices their plans probably is not going to change. So let me show you what impacts your pricing levels, the things that you need to be looking out for. The first thing you should be looking out for is the number of tasks per month. And then you can see the other thing that is changing here is the number of zaps per month. These are kind of the two elements that impact how much each level costs. So on the free plan here, you're getting five zaps and you're getting 100 tasks per month. And if you need to go up, then you're going to get some more zaps and you're going to get more tasks per month. So what are zaps and what are tasks? Here I am in the SPI Zapier account, and we're going to start by looking at Zaps first. And so in looking at our pricing plan, you can see that the number of Zaps, we have five, then 20, and then it goes to unlimited. That is a fixed number in your plan. So you get five forever on the free plan. You get 20 forever on the starter plan. That number doesn't change each month, whereas tasks are something that are going to reset each month. So in the SPI Zapier account here, I'm going to click on this left-hand sidebar, and when I hover over it, it's going to expand, and I'll go down to Zaps. Let's start by looking at Zaps. So I currently have 108 Zaps built in our account. And what a zap is, a zap is the automation that you build. It is sort of like the bucket that holds all of the things that you want to have happen. And so let's take a look at one of the zaps that we looked at in the first video. So zap is simply Zapier's term for an automation, an automation workflow. So if you are on the free plan, you get five automation workflows. If you are on the starter plan, you get 20. And then if you choose plans after that, you get an unlimited number of automation workflows. Now this might be a little different actually. If we look in the SPI account and in this sidebar at the bottom here, we can see how many tasks, how many zaps I have. And we are on a much older plan. We've been grandfathered in and so we've got a a better lower price, but with that plan came a limit of 125 zaps. So you can see I'm pushing up against the edge of how many we get with our current pricing plan. And that's a grandfathered in plan, that's an older plan. So depending on when you signed up for Zapier, the prices that you see when you go to change your plan might be different than the prices that we looked at um, on the sort of general pricing plan. So their pricing plans that they're showing there, that's for somebody who hasn't signed up for Zapier first. But if I go in my account and I go and I look at pricing plans, I actually see different numbers. So a Zap is simply an automation workflow. So this is one Zap here. Here's another Zap here. And even though they have different number of steps in them, they still both count as one single Zap. And so in my account, each one of these things here that I have set up are a zap. If you're on the free plan, you get five of these. The next thing to look at are number of tasks. So you can see in my plan here, I get 50,000 tasks per month. And that is a number that resets every month based on my billing date. If we go back and look at the pricing plans here, we see you get 100 tasks a month, 750 tasks a month, 2,000, and on and on. And you can fine tune these plans here 
based on if you need a few more tasks with a month. So maybe you want the professional plan, but instead of 2,000 tasks, you need 10,000. You can fine tune that here. And within your account, you can always upgrade, downgrade. So what is a task? Zapier has a really helpful article about what a task is that we will share down below. And this is very helpful in sort of understanding kind of their complex rules around what counts as a task, what counts toward your 100 tasks a month or your 750 or whatever. The most general way of talking about tasks is it's anything that comes after the trigger step. And so if I am looking at my zap here, I have a trigger and an action. And every time that this zap runs, this action step is going to count as one task. So this is an event registration zap. I am taking anybody who signed up in an event platform and I'm passing their information over to ConvertKit. And so this is a zap that's going to run once per registration. So if I have 50 people who register, this zap is going to run 50 times. I have one task inside of this zap. So one step in here that would count as a task, that's the action step. So if this runs 50 times, this is going to count as 50 tasks toward my monthly limit. If I put 100 people through this, if I had 100 people sign up for this event and this zap triggered, then this would count as 100 tasks toward my monthly limit. Now, if I look at a more complex zap here, so you can see this is a multi-step zap, and multi-step zaps are only available on paid plans. So you cannot create a multi-step zap if you are on a free plan. But with this, we can see I've got one, two, three action steps after the trigger. And so if this runs, this is going to count as three tasks every time that it runs. So if I send 50 people through this zap, this is going to count as 50 times three or 150 tasks. Now there's some nuance around tasks and some of the nuance can come when you're using something like this, which is a filter step. So you can see that this zap is kicking off for any new sale in Teachable. Well, I have a lot of products in Teachable. We have, we have many courses in Teachable, but I only want this zap to run if it is for the course A to Z webinars, and even more specifically, if it's only for a few pricing plans within this. So I've set up a filter step. Now, any time that I make a sale in Teachable, this zap is going to trigger because it triggers with any new sale in Teachable, but it's only going to continue if it meets the requirement of it being the A to Z webinars course and it being these two specific pricing plans. This is only going to count as a task if the person going through if the data meets this filter qualification. So if I make 100 sales in Teachable in the month, this is going to trigger 100 times. But if I only make 20 sales that actually meet this filter qualification, this is only going to count as 20 tasks because it only passed 20 times. So this would count as 20 of my tasks. And then moving on, the rest of this, the, the next two steps would only trigger 20 times because they're only, they only happen if the first condition is met here. So this would end up counting as 20 times three or 60 tasks. Here's another zap where the task math can get a little more complicated. So this is triggering any time a member updates themselves in member stack. And the first step is we're gonna add a tag in ConvertKit. So basically anytime that this triggers, this task is going to get counted. But then I have a filter after that point. And for some people, they won't meet the condition of that filter. And so at that point, the zap will stop if they don't meet the condition of the filter, step number two will run, but step number three will halt it. In that case, it would only count as a single task. But if it continued, then this would run, this would run, this would run, we would count as three tasks. So your, your math can get a little bit complicated, but 
when you're beginning with Zapier, basically the way to look at these things is to just try to estimate how many times do I think this is going to run. So if we go back to this one that's based on a new sale in Teachable, if I set up this Zap and I'm trying to estimate how many times is this going to run in my month, I will look at this and I will ask myself, okay, so this is a zap that is for the sale of our course A to Z webinars. What do I think is a reasonable expectation of the number of sales? Okay, so if I think I'm going to make 50 sales on A to Z webinars this month, then that means I need to give myself an allotment of 150 tasks. So one, two, three times 50. Now, what if we have an amazingly like fantastic sale and we make 200. Okay, well then on the outside, if we sort of blew out our expectations, then I would need to have one, two, three times 200. So I'd need to have 600 tasks available. But what you can do is just sort of ask yourself, like, is that likely to happen? And what happens if you exceed your number of tasks? So let's say that you do have a screamingly great month and you you sort of, the zap runs way more than you expected and you don't have enough tasks. What happens? When you hit 80% of your task usage for the month, Zapier will send you an email uh, and that will let you know, hey, you're coming up on your limit of tasks for the month. And if you think that you're gonna keep going at this rate, you might wanna upgrade. And then you can upgrade for the month and you'll be okay. Or you can just let it run and see. And if you end up hitting your limit before the month is over, what Zapier does is they hold all of those. So let me show you where those end up. In the dashboard here, we'll go to Zap History. And this is where you can see every time a Zap ran, if it was successful, um, if it failed, that sort of thing. And so you will get a notification from Zapier if you exceed your number of task usage, they will hold them. So you'll come here and there'll be an orange bar at the top and it will tell you the number of Zap runs they're holding because you don't have enough capacity in your account. And what you can do if you're like, if this happens the day before the month resets, you could just wait for 24 hours, come back in, and then you'll be able to replay those apps and they will run as though they just happened. If it's really important that you run those immediately, you can just go into your account settings and you'll click on the little avatar in the upper right. You can upgrade your account and then you'll come back into Zap history and then you can run those zaps that were held. This is also where you'll end up if you get an email from Zapier saying you have a Zap that's failing for some reason. If it's trying to run and it's not succeeding because there's some kind of an error. And if that happens multiple times, Zapier will send you an email letting you know, hey, your Zap is failing. You better come and take a look at it. And you'll be able to open up that Zap and make some fixes and then you can rerun the Zap. So if we're looking at my Zap history chart, you can see we're pretty consistent across the number of days, except that it looks like on this one day, I had a spike and I know exactly what happened that day. I did a one-time run of a Zap where I used Google Sheets to make a fix on just some data that we'd put in the wrong place and we needed to move a bunch of data all at once. I kicked that off with a zap using Google Sheets so that I could move all of that data in bulk rather than having to do it one at a time in the platform. And so that's why I've got a big spike in my number of tasks on that day. A few other miscellaneous things to know when you're looking at the pricing plans here. You'll see that under the starter plan, you only get three premium apps. And we talked briefly about premium apps in the last video. If you go to zapier.com slash apps, you can see all of the apps that work with Zapier and some of them are labeled premium. And if we sort apps by premium here, you can see that these tend to be apps that are really related to shopping carts. They're related to selling things or they're related to sort of really beefy systems like Salesforce. So that's another thing to take into consideration when you're trying to choose your pricing plan here is just to understand if you do need three or more of those premium apps. 
Another thing that you get as you go up to the professional plans and higher are the custom logic paths. And I've experimented with those. Those get into far more complicated zaps and they can be really useful, but they are a much more advanced skill in Zapier. And so if you're just getting started in Zapier, it's not likely that you're going to be using custom logic paths. But essentially what those are is it lets you at a certain point in your zap building, you can choose a fork and you can make two different routes that the data continues down. And so it's basically letting you split based on a characteristic. I have tried to use those in the past. They work okay, but really ultimately I end up in those cases just at that point splitting into two completely separate zaps and running those tasks separately. Two other things that you might see here, uh, just to call out what they are, formatters are another great step if you need to help transform data. A lot of times, like if you need to transform the way a date field is sort of formatted, if dates say are coming in to a system in the American format, so month, day, year, and you need to move them into another system that's in more of like, say like a European format where it's day, month, year, you could use the Zapier formatter to transform that date from the American format into say that European format. The other thing that you see here is transfer and that that's in beta. That is a brand new feature that Zapier is working up. I have not tried it out yet, but that is letting you move basically like a whole bunch of data in bulk from one system to another. Say if you were migrating from maybe like an email service provider to a different email service provider that didn't offer a migration, this is designed to help you with that process. I have not tested that out. It's still in beta. So I imagine that that's going to change quite a bit, you know, rapidly in the next few months. I hope this has been helpful in helping you understand what Zapier is going to cost you. Now, I imagine after watching these videos, you may be thinking like, great, but like walk me through building a Zap in detail. We have a bunch of videos on how to build Zaps in detail here on this channel. The best one to start with, if you are brand new to building Zaps, would be the Zap How to Automate Podcast Transcriptions. It's a very simple, Zap. And so the process that I take you through there in that video walks you through really in detail. How does Zapier work in terms of building Zaps? And then after that point, we just have a lot of really great videos here on how to build Zaps based on what we're using in the SPI business. I hope these videos were helpful for you. If you're looking for more information on how to grow your online business, if you're looking to build your audience, monetize your business, or just automate more steps in your business, we have a lot of great courses. You can find them at Smart Passive Income by clicking on courses at the top, or you can go to courses.smartpassiveincome.com.